Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kevin Davani. I have a very special guest, Professor Konstantin um, Karishenko. <laughs> Would you please introduce uh, yourself? Uh, um, uh, you? My name is Konstantin Karishenko. I am a professor of Russian Academy uh, for uh, Public Administration and National Economy. Uh, it's a presidential academy, the, probably the biggest uh, university in, in Russia. And you're a former uh, member or, or director of the Central I Bank? I used to work for Russian Central Bank in a position of a deputy chairman, a board mm -hmm. member. Okay. Yeah. Now what would interest me in the first uh, instance is that I know that the Russian um, policy or um, strategy of um, uh, specifically about gold they have been Russian uh, National Bank has been ac acquiring uh, purchasing um, I don't know how much but I think in 2018 approximately could it be realistic like 260 270 tons of gold uh, actually I don't remember the overall amount in tons but in a uh, uh, cash equivalent it's uh, above uh, 70 billion of US dollars okay good so I, I heard that the last number in total, I mean that's at least the official number I have, is uh, more than 2,000 something, 2,000 tons of gold they have been hoarding or holding um, uh, as a reserve sort of. Yeah, yeah pr pr probably yes, because uh, Central Bank of Russia started to accumulate gold uh, back in some late 90s, early zeros, mm -hmm. uh, for many reasons. And actually, practically all this gold is a, is a uh, uh, gold from Russian sources. It's just central bank buying this gold from Russian producers. It's just a national accumulation of gold. That's it. No specific program and no attempt to, to grab this gold from from outside. Exactly. And Russia is actually the only country that what I heard and read is that they hold their entire gold uh, in their own hands, which is not in, in you know the case in for other countries. They have it. No, in China's the same. The China is the same? Okay. China is the same and okay. some other countries uh, who recently which recently decided to uh, continue to start gold accumulation, mm -hmm. they also uh, considering the so-called pure gold ownership. I mean, pure, it's uh, when the gold mm -hmm. is in, in their own walls, not, not outside. Exactly. Not, it's not a paper gold, mm -hmm. actually. Now, I don't want to interpret too much in it, but obviously different central banks or different governments have different intentions, motives, and reasons for acquiring more and more of this gold. I mean, could you say for Russian policies, what is the intention behind it? Is it to, for example, to, you know, be more sovereign and write off more the debts and, you know, strengthen the economy? Uh, could you elaborate on that a little mm, bit? Yeah, probably there are two main reasons behind of this behavior, not only Russian Central Bank, but others as well. One is uh, attempt to create an. Uh, independent settlement too in the form of uh, gold mm -hmm. because you know uh, every central bank can control all transaction in its currency dollar euros rubles mm -hmm. pounds and so on and so forth that's why if uh, some central banks or some government decide to uh, impose a certain restriction limitation sanction and so and so forth on certain participant in the market they could limit uh, the ability of this uh, actor to, 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 to settle transactions mm -hmm. in this currency. That's why if you have independent currency, which actually gold is, you uh, have a more uh, flexibility in, in settling your, your transaction you want to conduct, you want to conduct with some, some counterparties and so on and so forth. That's one reason. Uh, the second reason is uh, uh, value preservation because uh, we understand that because especially of this quantitative easing policy there is a danger that uh, some big currency, big I mean uh, from a IMF um, basket including gonna, the US dollar, right? Including US yep. dollar, including others, uh, could uh, uh, lose uh, their value not intentionally but as a consequence of this type of policy because each country trying to solve its own problem mm -hmm. and sometime for its uh, for this resolution they need a devaluation maybe even serious devaluation of local currency for this country is good maybe but for those who keep their assets in this currency it can be not a very 
uh, how to say, attractive option. So if you want to protect yourself from this type of mm -hmm. uh, value, um, how to say, distortion, you can you can buy something that is independent from from this fiat, fiat currencies and gold is a, the first uh, how to say option in, yeah. in such a policy. That's also quite uh, mm -hmm. obvious. So it's it's used definitely as a hedge against uh, you know fiat currencies and also a sign that is sort of a you know a, a, a cautious distrust uh, towards uh, you know the no, to say to say that it, it's a hedge it would be a little bit of exaggeration because the yeah. amount on, of gold in the world uh, not not big enough uh, around six trillion the whole gold that has been digged out of uh, earth uh, for the whole life of the uh, human being um, you know, now approximately equal to six plus mm -hmm. something trillion uh, US dollars in equivalent and it's it's not a not a big amount because uh, the, the cash only uh, uh, the world cash in you know, all currencies is I don't remember but there are, um, around one one for about 14 14 billions mm -hmm. e even even more than that close to 20 billions mm -hmm. uh, sorry trillions US dollars so it's incomparable amount mm -hmm. and no, no, not to mention all this how it's electronic mm -hmm. uh, and balances and so on and so forth. That's why you can't use gold as a serious hedge against uh, these currencies, but you can use it as a kind of di diversifier, as a kind of, mm -hmm. how to say, safe haven for certain specific uh, type of your transaction and uh, as a user part of your portfolio. For example, Russia holds now over, if I if my memory is good, over one over four hundred billions mm -hmm. U.S. dollar in U.S. dollar equivalent uh, reserves, and only like uh, say uh, how much twenty less than twenty percent is is in gold. Mm -hmm. Okay, usually, you know, the, what I, I mean, we always have official numbers, sort of, uh, that, you know, what is official, what is visible, uh, transparent is transparent, but there's a lot of gold transactions that is, uh, what I know is, uh, you know, not really transparent or secretive, because... You mean transactions? Uh, well, also or acquisition, holdings. also acquisition of gold. No, it's, di it's different. If you're talking about uh, uh, holdings, yeah. it's uh, uh, relatively transparent. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, because okay. you know, you know, it's it's quite difficult. Imagine that you uh, dig out of the earth. Uh, I don't know, uh, hundred thousand tons per yeah. year. It's okay. it's impossible. Because we have hundred ninety-five thousand tons approximately total uh, 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 stock. Yeah. Sort of and. And each year, what, approximately uh, two to five percent? Could it yes, be yes, yes, two, two, three, two, three, three, two, three okay. percent, which actually has an, uh, how to say, extracting cost close to one thousand per uh, mm -hmm. one ounce. So you can calculate how how much in the in start it. to flow ratio sort of. Yes, okay. Yes. So yeah. it's it's uh, so it's impossible. So it's still hard money. Mm, yeah. yeah, it's still hard money, quite predictable, uh, yeah. and 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 when it goes about transaction, of course they are not transparent, but nobody wants. It's like talking about the transaction mm -hmm. in in cash. Nobody okay. wants to disclose transaction in cash. Okay. Um, you gave a presentation yesterday. It was fabulous. Uh, thank you thank so you. much for your insight. Can you just give a general overview or evaluation assessment of yourself? Um, where do you see um, the the? I'm just talking about Bitcoin. Uh, sure. Where do you see Bitcoin as a as a me as a store of value, medium of exchange, and and unit of account, uh, or as a settlement. You know, you know, you can uh, uh, point to diamonds, you can point to gold, you mm -hmm. can point to something quite uh, stable in terms of uh, how to say uh, pre existence preservation. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, mm, uh, and you can consider this as a type of. Uh, how to say money su su substitution, mm -hmm. uh, kind of money substitution, and in these terms, gold, sorry, Bitcoin also could be considered as a type of this type of uh, asset. But when it goes about money, money is much more complex thing than just a pure, uh, how to say, uh, refrigerator for value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, it, it's uh, and it, it becomes more and more uh, in demand for this 
settlement feature as well. Mm -hmm. So if in the past the value preservation was, how to say, more in demand, more important feature of money, uh, in the course of time, in the course of development of this technological, uh, how to say, world, the settlement of facility of money becomes more and more important. Mm -hmm. And in that context, uh, Bitcoin is not a perfect thing. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, people were uh, forced to invent this uh, clearing or netting mechanism uh, like uh, Lightning just to resolve the, how to say, embedded problem of Bitcoin. This well, it's about the Lightning, it was all about, uh, you know, the proverbial, how do I pay for my coffee? off-chain sort of and not uh, the, the the question is how do we scale this up how do we scale up the bitcoin uh, transaction to mm. you know to do normal day-to-day -day transactions via your mobile phone you know you have your wallet and uh, just small amounts of satoshi sort of the subunits of of uh, bitcoin yeah 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 I, I agree but you know um that if we take uh, take a look at the last let's say 40 50 years of uh, uh, money existence, especially when this era of f fiat money started since 1972. Mm -hmm. We can uh, witness that the problem of developing efficient payment system is becoming more and more important. Okay. And efficiency of the system, it's a rather complex thing. Of course, you can uh, resolve your problems why a special netting, clearing, refinancing, uh, 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 overdraft and other stuff, uh, me mechanisms that help your payment system to be more efficient, to transact more and more per second. Uh, but uh, actually the question is that the feature of Bitcoin I mean this uh, uh, proof of uh, work uh, model for uh, how to say of trust, da? yeah. Or, or trustless. Uh, I mean, for, okay, form of trust or trust. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. It's a bit. Uh, it's a kind of a quite a complex, uh, how to say, element mm -hmm. or quite a complex uh, approach to solve such a relatively, relatively simple problem. Uh, I'm not criticizing, I'm, I admire the idea that ideas were uh, how to combine in the form of Bitcoin, but actually it's, to me, it's a kind of experiment, it's a kind of, uh, how to say, hot couture, hot cuisine, mm -hmm. which is to understand the taste, to understand the tendency, to, 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 to show the way, but not like a ordinary normal uh, food or ordi ordinary normal uh, wear. Mm -hmm. So th for that purposes there are, there could be much simpler solutions based maybe on ideas which Bitcoin discovered, but these ideas can be rather relatively simpler. Mm -hmm. for, namely, I mean uh, this uh, corporate blockchains, for example, mm -hmm. which definitely need a certain, how to say, intervention of a central authority or central so that's a necessity the central uh, authority yes is a because necessity. you know the history of the uh, uh, humans i mean our uh, history uh, for last say five six thousand years shows that of course democracy and self-regulation and small communities uh, coexistence was the model of a how to say, of a living, I mean, mutual living. But uh, actually, in terms of uh, fighting, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. uh, attempts to, 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 to get something uh, for the cost of neighbor, uh, demanded from the population creation of this, how to say, protective mechanism in the form of state. Mm -hmm. Also, um, uh, Red, uh, redistribution mechanisms that transfer some, uh, how to say, wealth out of wealthy part of the uh, social society to a poorer part of society also needs intervention of the state. Mm -hmm. it, on a voluntary basis, this mechanism works not very, okay. not very good. You know, there's this Austrian economist called Rothbard, um, and he 
one of, in one of his books, he said that, you know, it is uh, somehow funny to observe that uh, the, you know, the, the, you know, the conventional economists uh, always think that, okay, there is a supply and demand, it's understood. There's supply and demand in the microeconomics. But in the macroeconomics, when it comes to, monet to money or the monetary medium, all of a sudden it's not applicable for the you know Keynesians or Keynes Keynesians econom economics, and uh, so can we leave maybe? Uh, is it? Do you think? Well, what do you think of? Let's let's put it this way. What do you think then is the unique features of Bitcoin? Relative compared to gold, because gold has a relative scarcity, as we said. Mm, it's Bitcoin, about Bitcoin, Bitcoin as well, actually. No, no uh, Bitcoin has an absolute scarcity. That's a unique feature. N not necessarily, because when it goes about Bitcoin, we now think that the uh, ceiling for Bitcoin is 21 million. That's it. But and you can already pre-calculate when the last Bitcoin going to be mined, and that's but, in the year 2140. But, but the real limitation, mm -hmm. it just a Satoshi, the, this eight. Uh, uh, zero decimals. The yeah. decimals. For example, if it expanded down to, for example, 16, and we decrease the premium for mining down to something rather small, we could continue this mining of Bitcoin forever. No, but the 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 the, the, the absolute scarcity is set in stone from the very beginning in 0 0.1 yeah. version. Wait, 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 wait. Scarcity means scarcity of value. It means the total, absolutely limited supply mm. of, of, we of a... Shouldn't, we shouldn't measure Bitcoin in a number of Bitcoin. Okay. Because if mm. we can split Bitcoin down to double Satoshi, triple Satoshi, I mean the number of zeros, we could create new and new and new money. Yeah, but one Bitcoin equals 100 million Satoshis. So there is not more than that. There is 21 million no, no, uh, I'm, Bitcoin. Uh, it's, it's clear, but what I'm, yeah. what I'm pointing, what I'm uh, had, so speculating on, that if we agree that we can decrease, or oh, sorry, increase the number of zeros past uh, point, down to 16, for example, from eight, we could create another portion, a small portion in terms of number of mm -hmm. Bitcoins. But in terms of value, if Bitcoin is a scarce thing, it will continue growth in its price. That's why uh, each next mm -hmm. small piece will cost like, let's say, one dollar. Now we have uh, the eight, one Satoshi, one dollar, then uh, one tenth of Satoshi will cost one dollar, then one hundredth of Satoshi will. So, mm -hmm. it's it, the number of how to say coins or number sat, uh, mm -hmm. Satoshi not meaningful as regard to the value. The value is is uh, related to, to, to the demand for this. Yeah, and we are far away from mass adoption, okay? Uh, there's yeah. like one percent of the Earth's population knows or interacts or somehow, you know, uh, transacts with um. Bitcoin. Now, uh, I'm just saying that, okay, uh, the, uh, let's, just, let's just, you know, keep it simple for the viewers. We have an absolutely limited number of Bitcoins to be mined. That is, to, you know, we are right now at uh, approximately 17.5 or 18 million already mined Bitcoins. Yeah. Uh, approximately 3 million have already been lost because people have lost the private keys, the wallets, okay, whatsoever. Okay. And, and, there is, uh, and there's another magic sauce in, bit, in, the, in the Bitcoin programming is that there's a difficulty adjustment. So it means uh, uh, with, with each, you know, with each Bitcoin, with more uh, hash or whatever, more or less hashing power, and more or less miners, everything adjusts. So actually, in the long term, it will become even more and more difficult and harder to yeah, mine and, the and, next and, Bitcoin. And, so, and, so it's a deflationary, so it's a value appreciative mechanism yeah. built into the setting stone. Absolutely. absolutely. What, and, what and, does and it mean mon in monetary economical terms? It means that uh, Bitcoin will never be used as a, a payment tool because it's a very, very inconvenient. It's what? Inconvenient. Why is it inconvenient? Um, uh, you know, let's imagine there is a, uh, uh, for example, uh, the, uh, how to say, the uh, picture drawn by uh, Rembrandt. Mm -hmm. And we decided to use this as a payment tool. 
it's a one big piece, then uh, or gold the same, one bar. Then we split this picture into smaller pieces, which also belong to Rembrandt. We can use it. Then we can use a small, small. But because of scarcity, they will be growing in, in, its, in, in, in their value. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, two processes at the same time. One, it's a growth in value. And second, a demand for splitting this big element to smaller, 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 smaller pieces. That's what I mentioned when I said that we need another zeros past point. Mm -hmm. That the process, how can we use for practical needs, Bitcoin, Satoshi, milli Satoshi, and so on and so forth in the future. Mm -hmm. But the, because of value is not stable from here, we have stable coin, from what we have stable coin. It's, it's not convenient, it's yeah. not a practical thing. But once the mass adoption kicks in, once the critical mass is reached, no. there is the, uh, I mean, of, we cannot talk about, I mean, uh, of course it's volatile. That's, it's uh, a natural uh, mechanism no, 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 because no, 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 it no. is. Wait, 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 it can work this way, it can yeah. work this way. For example, uh, in Vienna, in Moscow, uh, drivers are drive on the right side of mm -hmm. the road. Yeah. And if I ask, or if I imagine, then all drivers, will suddenly decide to go on the left side, mm -hmm. you could get something which is uh, practical in London. But I start with this idea of the adoption, mm -hmm. mass adoption, but mm -hmm. it will never work for that. Yeah. So the idea of mass adoption, it's a little bit fictional one. What, what kind of, of, of hindrances or, or obstacles do you see for, I mean, what, what, uh, what are the reasons that you It's not that? an obstacle. Okay, one is laziness. Lazy. Why me, my friend, okay. a friend of my friend, should consider this rather complicated and tricky thing like uh, wallets, uh, Bitcoin, uh, it's not to, it's fluctuating not, it's price? Not too, it's not, uh, we are far, we are still away, we are still but, uh, uh, some steps away from user friendliness. That's for sure. I admit that. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, if somebody wants really to store uh, just Bitcoin, just store it, not transact with it, not pay coffee with it or whatever, but just store with it, it's possible. You get, you get yeah, hardware wallets. Yeah, the same wallet. with uh, yeah. pictures, the same with diamonds, yeah. the same with uh, rare uh, furniture and so on and so forth. It's, it's the same stuff. Yeah, but the technology no is evolving. So once, you know, the, the technology becomes user friendly, uh, you know, for the average person practicable, and you have your wallet, you have it on mobile phone, it's like the internet. I mean, uh, in the 90s, even Nobel Prize winner said, you oh, the, you know, it just, uh, it's just side effect, it's just gonna go away. It was the same with all the other technologies, with the car, with the fax machine. No, I understand, but you are, I, I, I think you are mixing up two different things. Yeah. Once, once, one is a technological improvement that makes your uh, transaction, your activity more comfortable, easy, and, and so on and so forth and the payment system itself, with, which needs, how to say, another thing. The payment system, of course, linked to the uh, technology, but it has a, its own uh, uh, internal logic, how it should organize. And the very first item, or oh, sorry, very first, okay, uh, how to say, um, item in the list, of, of uh, uh, things needed is the stability of a settlement tool. Yeah. It's, it's not about adoption. Mm -hmm. It's just about something I, I would like to have as a granted mm -hmm. from somebody who approached me and offer this uh, option, please use the system for your settlement. Yeah. And Bitcoin will never fulfill this. Okay, with some tricks, with some, uh, how to say, uh, special mechanisms, we could achieve it, but it's artificial. Why we should do that? If we can but isn't fiat currency artificial too? And, yeah. the, and the essence of Bitcoin blockchain technology, which is, by the way, uh, the blockchain is just one technology. It, it's just, it's, uh, it, there are several technologies on Bitcoin that is peer-to-peer -peer cryptography and a trustless network consensus and of course the blockchain technology. So, but it's the essence of it is decentralized. So, uh, and, and you know, the, the counterpart is, is centralization. I mean, how, which way do we want to have it? Do we want to have it centralized or decentralized? No, it's, uh, you know, you're putting the, the question or, or you, are, you are 
framing the problem yeah. rather specifically. Specifically, okay. yeah. uh, uh, you know, it, it's not an ideal world, and it, it doesn't start from the scratch. Mm -hmm. It has already its history, and it has already certain actors, certain players, and certain interest in the interest of state mm -hmm. to preserve the uh, control over the system. Mm -hmm. So that's the purpose to con of to course the control. it's it's okay. intention. Okay. It's intention. Uh, yeah. We could discuss the uh, reasons, we could mm -hmm. discuss the consequences, of course. I could uh, accept many arguments. But it's something that exists, it, it, it probably will not disappear. Mm -hmm. So why should we expect from the state that it will voluntarily mm -hmm. uh, uh, abolish its, how to say, in inherited or its embedded right to control, for example, monetary system? Because you know it's it's quite easy in in, in every country just to uh, uh, issue certain regulation will will make transaction in Bitcoin if here and some other uh, cryptocurrency quite difficult quite complex uh, I mean uh, so called uh, or this proverbial adding sense into the will. Okay, but take uh, countries like whatever Venezuela, Argentina, Turkey, Iran with, with massive uh, inflation, hyperinflation, they don't have a problem. They can even memorize the t uh, 12 or 24 monomic uh, uh, seed phrase, go over the border, get them themselves a hardware wallet, and they can just, without any hassle, without any headache, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, have their bitcoins on their, you know, in their wallet again. And uh, there, is no, there, is no, there is no censorship. You know what I'm saying? You it's know, totally problem, borderless. problem with inflation, it's not a problem of uh, the mechanism of money issuance. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Argentine already, uh, how to say, had an experiment with linking its uh, currency to US dollar, mm -hmm. and uh, they, how to say, ended up in tears. This, uh, and many other countries who uh, attempted this currency board uh, got in quite a negative result. Uh, you know, Using gold or, or dollar or whatever currency as a stabilization tool, it's not a very good idea. Mm. For many, many reasons, it's it's quite quite clear. Any currency, any currency, any currency, any currency, mm -hmm. any, any anything. Because you know, mm. okay, if you would like to play football very good. You can just watch how, for example, Messi plays and try to, to mimic, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. quite difficult because it's, it's, it's his special model, his special feature, how he plays. Mm -hmm. Me can do something else much worse and, and other. So the same with monetary policy. There is no uh, one monetary policy if it's uh, all. It's mm -hmm. just an uh, inflation targeting. It's something just that it's attached to absolutely different types of monetary policy under the same name. And it works rather different in different mm -hmm. countries. So not, to, not to, to, to talk about this quantitative easing and so on and so forth. Yeah. So but that's the standard. I mean, this is the conventional dominant system. It's fractional reserve banking, quantitative easing, and the setting, the artificial setting of interest rates, which, I mean, I don't have uh, to mention this, but the Bank for International Settlements, who controls through the central banks, the, no, 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 the, it's, it's the interest a, 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 rate of the, of the credits, which is given to the states, to the governments, this mm. is why it's called risk-free uh, credits, which is given to states, no, because they, this is how they... <laughs> it's, they a, it's exaggeration, really. Yeah, but <laughs> how, how, do they, how, how else do they, do they dominate and control the, the credit expansion and the debt? We have, we have approximately no, no. $250 trillion dollars of global wait, debt, Wait, wait, right? wait, 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 you are, you are putting all these uh, different things yeah, into Yeah, I'm trying to board. get a bigger picture of... No, it's uh, not a bigger picture. Okay. I, 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 if you put different products into the, uh, uh, how to say, uh, mm, port and uh, uh, sometimes you can g could a uh, uh, good uh, how to say uh, mm, cookie or good uh, product sometimes it it's could could create something rather strange so it's still needed even in a uh, uh, cooking just to separate products and to to understand which products fits to each uh, mm -hmm. type of food the same with monetary policy. We, we, we need uh, to differentiate. The debt problem is one thing. 
interest rates management, it's another thing. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, credit extension by a central bank or bank institution is the third thing. The fractional reserve system is a fourth thing, and so on and so forth. They are interrelated, but they can't be put together just to get but something. But they're interrelated and interconnected. Interrelated, uh. interconnected, but they play each of those, for example, deposit insurance, corresponding banking, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Each of, of these modern elements of monetary policy, banking system, uh, play their uh, roles. Sorry. Pleasure. Sorry. Yeah, uh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, but, uh, no, oops, thank you. But uh, the, um, the role of each of those elements is specific and in, in, from country to country it varies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and from time to time it varies. For example, this idea of uh, narrow banking, this narrow bank project in America uh, uh, underscore the problem with this interest rates management that Federal mm -hmm. Reserve does. What is the narrow banking, just for the explanation? Uh, narrow, narrow banking, it's a, as a model, it's an mm -hmm. idea of mm -hmm. opening uh, clients' uh, accounts, I mean current accounts, uh, for clients as a physical person or, or uh, businesses, or, or only with central bank. So actually mm -hmm. it's the, it's uh, fits in, into this uh, framework of uh, uh, how to say, uh, destroying or uh, decreasing the role of a fractional reserve banking system. And uh, even uh, there is a practical example in Switzerland last mm. uh, year, they've been voting for this type of change to their uh, banking system. They, they voted no, but in a significant portion, about one third, voted for. So it's a and what's the purpose or the reason uh, it? It's uh, a more strong, more stable, mm -hmm. uh, less vulnerable banking system. Mm -hmm. That's it. The same uh, Swiss people trying to establish uh, a few years ago uh, with, um, how to say, setting a special rules for central bank as regard to how much gold this central bank should, uh, should carry, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, and the narrow bank project, it's another story in America, uh, where an, a special entity was registered uh, under the regulation of uh, Banking Act. And this bank uh, was, uh, how to say, its business model was devoted to only one and simple idea, to collect uninsured deposits and to invest money into special account mm -hmm. with a Federal Reserve Bank and the unsured deposits uh, pays like a quarter of percent that time yeah. paid yeah. and these deposits pay uh, like 1.5-1.7 percent. It's uh, quite an mm -hmm. interesting business. And, and the Federal Reserve uh, now decided not to open this account for this bank. They even issued special regulation recently and uh, this bank st started attempted to sue Central Bank of America, I mean, Federal Reserve okay. System. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, there are problems in the current system, and these problems create such a stri strange creature like this narrow bank. But uh, it doesn't mean that we should, uh, how to say, change the system okay. in full. Okay, let me ask you then directly, what, what would be your preferred or your envisioning of, of, a, pros of a process to, you know, to, to create a more, if you want, I don't know, stable, more, um, more uh, sort of equal access to opportunities, to investment opportunities, to store of value, to, to a more healthier economy? Let's agree about these targets. Mm -hmm. The, the target, the idea of having healthy economy, stable growth, uh, reliable banking system and so on and so forth mm -hmm. are good ideas, but they are a little bit of dream. Mm -hmm. Why is In, that? Uh, not because practice showed mm -hmm. that every attempt to create something stable and uh, forever didn't uh, get to the mm -hmm. right point. Since when, would you since, say? Since very beginning, all, yeah. all, all, all systems, all financial mm -hmm. systems that existed before, they failed because of debts, mm -hmm. because of mm -hmm. uh, write-downs, because of speculation and so on and so forth. So, the, to me, the idea of a stable, stable or reliable financial system 
uh, could be rephrased to the uh, to establish to, to step to the idea of establishing model under which all these uh, uh, flexible elements mm -hmm. could adjust to the to uh, each other to preserve this how to say temporarily temporary balance so the overall system gonna be stable but fr through one to another to another mm. period of instability maybe it mm. sounds quite strange but um, the system should be uh, adjusted to the but would you support or advocate or if, if you had the decision making process to to introduce a purely as we had before 1940 because the decoupling uh, from the gold actually started be shortly before 1940 before the first world war uh, because most people think it was you know nixon shock in the 70s and but actually the decoupling of the gold would you be in favor of a fully fully 100% backed a uh, reserve ratio no, not and at all. pure gold standard not at all why why is that uh, because you know we already there i mean in the uh, system of uh, intangible economy economy mm -hmm. comprised of m mostly intangible things and we go further further and further mm -hmm. virtual reality tokens and, and, and derivatives and every other every other thing we could mention uh, and the money that should serve this economy should have adequate flexibility in terms of settlement facility plus mm -hmm. adequate amount but nobody knows what the amount is adequate the attempt to, to set up in a target quantitative target is probably very very difficult if practically achievable that's why we, on one hand, we need to create a uh, monetary system which will be as flexible as economy is, just to adjust mm -hmm. its, uh, how to say, mechanisms to the settlement process in the uh, economy itself. Plus, it should try, I mean, this monetary system to avoid situation when the value of this uh, settlement unit is distorted but the distortion of the unit could come not only uh, from uh, the uh, how to say from the speculation or from uh, attempts to save certain systemic institution and so on and so forth but also from just a, a wrong understanding what of uh, what the monetary policy is its targets and so on and so forth so it's the, the question is the biggest question w w what is a stable currency itself mm. because it, it, so you would not advocate a hard money no the no hardest no. money no no Go with, a, with a with a relative absolute scarcity no no i wouldn't advocate because scarcity means a limitation limitation for your settlement process you know now we uh, uh, approach, we already approach that uh, uh, level of uh, economic development where in a timely settlement probably even more important than any other mm -hmm. elements of your, of your deal. And it will become more and more because we are going as far as I understand to the economy uh, of uh, machines, economy of things and the internet of things where interaction will be more and more not between us people rather between machines and machines need probably another model for their settlement process fast small amounts uh, uh, no intermediaries and so on so for this but that's the blockchain I mean it's the absolutely so yeah. Blockchain, I agree fully. Blockchain as a technology. I mean, with all the other technologies, artificial intelligence. Now that you mentioned it, uh, yes. Where are we going with this? I mean, okay, you're saying the the, the this computerized or or, or, or you know uh, technological world needs more speed, more acceleration, more more scaling up, right? And Absolutely. it needs its own native currency. Yeah, but this native currency. Uh, will be used for very, very speedy settlement for mm, thousands, thousands, millions, trillions exactly. of transactions. Yeah, I agree with you. And 
this transaction will be conducted within a very short period of time. That's, that, that means that the value preservation uh, will, the question of value preservation will be squeeze mm -hmm. down the very short period. Mm -hmm. You need to preserve the value. You need to, uh, risk will come not from that. For example, mm -hmm. risk could, we, we could get much more risk, for example, from an exchange rate, if we use different currencies, yeah. from uh, interest rate, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So uh, I don't know when and how the value of this currency will be reset. Maybe every morning in 8 a.m. the value will be decided, whatever way or any other forms. But the settlement cycles will become shorter, 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 and all agents will demand more and more this settlement facility from mm -hmm. your currency, mm -hmm. rather than value preservation option mm -hmm. of your currency. So these two things are interrelated, but mm -hmm. they are becoming separate in terms of uh, way of resolving the problem. Mm -hmm. That is the point. So blockchain for settlement, wonderful. Uh, uh, internet and uh, this network and so on mm -hmm. so forth, perfect. Um, uh, smart contracts, smart devices, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Uh, but it, it has nothing to do with value. It's just mm -hmm. a way of, of, of settling. It's like a, you can create a very good roads, but you could separately decide which car will go like, along these roads. Of course, this is interrelated. But you can resolve this issue mm -hmm. separately, for, to an extent, of course. Okay. All right. Let's go to another avenue. Uh, where do you see? Do you, uh, I mean, I know you're not an oracle, but how do you predict? Uh, how would you predict the the monetary, economical, financial, um, you know, existential um, future in the in the next ten to twenty years, with all the technologies now evolving at a rate of speed that is just unimaginable? Um, uh, where, where do you see that? I mean, how would you assess that? If you continue what we already discussed, uh, definitely we will have the uh, tokenization of practically every real asset. Okay, so, so it, you, it you will, do it, okay. Yes, it will, it will each asset for... for Everything, to, 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 with yes, a tangible, intangible... It doesn't matter, because yeah. uh, the, the thing we definitely need, it's a, mm -hmm. uh, how to say, uh, uh, um, uh, appropriateness of a certain thing for uh, circulation process. Mm. Table, chair, skirt, uh, mm. uh, workforce. Fractional uh, ownership on uh, real assets? Uh, real yes, of fractional. Real estate? Uh, yes, yes, of course, of course, okay. of course. So it will probably change the role of the ownership. Yeah. Because uh, no, you, you will, it could be squeezed down so to a very short period of time which you definitely really need this thing. Because if you need spoon, you need this spoon only to eat, but mm -hmm. you, need, you don't need this spoon the any other time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if, if you get this spoon for this time, okay. The rest of time, it's not of mm -hmm. your interest. Uh, it's the same yeah. for, for different things. Uh, and tokenization, one uh, point. The, the second point is uh, uh, so-called smart machines as a form of attaching ID to this certain thing mm -hmm. and creating a stable channel of information gathering from this mm -hmm. uh, thing. For example, the same spoon, you need to understand that mm -hmm. this spoon has this number, mm -hmm. we know its location, and we know how it, how it has been moved from this chair exactly. table to another yeah. table to another table. So it's Just more transparency and also more verifiability? Yes, verifiability, controllability, and uh, the decreasing cost, and so on. So forth. Transparency, yeah. yeah. It's a mm, uh, smart machine. Then, if this uh, uh, chair, table, spoon uh, is a how to say member of society, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a part of this system of circulation mm -hmm. for everything. We need to uh, 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 write the rules how it works, mm -hmm. namely smart contract for yeah. this spoon. What's the role of this spoon? How it can be used? What's the price? And so on. So. And then we should have an uh, environment, we should have a frame uh, uh, within which these all things are circulating, namely blockchain or uh, blockchain universe with cross-chain links and so on and so forth. And if we have such a universe, we need to use a certain uh, dedicated 
thing like a special token as a monetary tool mm -hmm. to settle all the transactions. What is that? Uh, I think that the, uh, either one central bank or several central banks will agree what they uh, offer to this market. Because now we uh, mm -hmm. use banking system mm -hmm. to provide this facility to the public. But now we already understand that central bank itself could do this. Okay, so you're seeing the central bank as a central authority or as a conglomerate of central authorities yeah. dictating and controlling? Uh, you know, no, dictating and, and it's uh, not a proper But influencing. Uh, but influencing, you know, regulating uh, and uh, servicing okay. and so on and so forth. And they could create these digital currencies that are going to be used for, for computers primarily, for machines primarily, and maybe for, um, for humans, but not necessarily. Because as a human, I, I'm not interested in a payment. I'm interested in getting something. I want a bottle of water. Yeah, well, uh, the transaction is a supply and demand, right? Uh, I mean, no, we're transacting. A, yeah, yeah, we're, but we're not going back to the we barter. Are not, we we're are not going to back to barter. We are not, it, it's, it's different. We are, not, we are not transacting. Transaction, it's a form of uh, mm -hmm. achieving a certain goal. My, my goal is not transact with a vending machine. My goal, my goal is to get this bottle of water. Yeah, because and otherwise the barter, as in I don't know, I don't know, many thousands of years ago, would be a coincidence of wants and needs, and we are not. We left that stage already. So, so I, I do want to have a value so that tomorrow I know this 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 monetary medium does not have less value than yesterday or the day before yesterday, and that's called inflation. That's what I'm saying. The debasement of the devaluing of a monetary medium—that's something I think that there has been, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, you us. know, you know, money—it's a refrigerator for value. Mm -hmm. If you you don't need this stuff and want to keep it fresh, you convert it to the to the money. You put it into the refrigerator and grab it tomorrow, day after tomorrow, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But if you get whatever you want immediately you are not thinking about refrigerating you are not thinking about preserving value in the form of money yeah. you can exchange whatever you have with something uh, whatever uh, somebody could offer you so it's it's a quite complex story but it's not a practical thing today uh, as, of, as of today i think uh, the gradual uh, penetration into this uh, IoT world will be supported by, by central bank with the issuance of this digital currency and setting up a special framework uh, with, uh, under which we could settle all, all these transactions with the help of special... But uh, without intermediaries. I think that's, uh, a, that's a crucial point, uh, right? That, that's the you know, whole point. Wait, 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 know. wait. There are two types of intermediaries. Uh -huh. uh, one is a broker, another it's a dealer. But, Without, but still I have to th uh, trust a third entity. Uh, yeah, I, but, I, but I'm, 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 sorry, right. I'm stressing yeah. the point. Yeah. The dealer model, it's bank's model, where you use a bank obligation, mm -hmm. not central bank, commercial mm -hmm. bank, to, to settle. The broker model, where there are some facilitators who could help you to transact, but the risk you take you don't 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 take risk on these intermediaries or at least you to take a limited risk on these intermediaries but the ultimate risk it's on a central authority on a central bank or as the issuer of the money so we are going more and more out of dealer model to more and more broker model where the number of those brokers also decreasing yeah and the the, the blockchain is the ultimate broker will which will help you to settle everything but in an unpredictable future but if we want to, to get from a point A to the point B, we should understand which path we will go. And my, my, my idea is that the central bank should offer this type of settlement tool, and the other intermediaries should create an, a comfortable environment for exchanging of the results of our uh, work and uh, to trade or to, to exchange uh, or these tokens which we are either offering or acquiring. But still, there's a s somehow a, um, an entity or somehow a centralized single point of you know of uh, of an entity that w we need to in we need to trust, and that's the whole thing. No, no, that's wait. the whole point because with the wait, well, you're, again, you're mixing two things. One, mm -hmm. it's a operational intermediation, okay. and second, it's a regulated regulation authority, mm -hmm. and I'm talking about the central 
participant as a regulator, as a supervisor, okay. but not as a service provider. Yes, some brokers could, could, could provide some service, mm -hmm. but ultimately all service will be uh, programmed and uh, embedded into these smart contracts, which will uh, serve as a big, big network where all these contracts interact with each other. But again, testing this system, uh, being sure that all software works properly, it's, a, it's another big problem. But intermediation in, in terms of taking risk and offering service will be gradually decreasing, decreasing, and decreasing. But the role of supervisor, problem resolution, uh, dispute resolution, and so on and so forth, as, uh, maybe it's a state or some other authority, mm -hmm. we still need it, even in the fully okay. decentralized okay. system. I, mean, I would understand in the case of smart contracts, you know, in execution, under what conditions, and something goes wrong, okay, there needs to be... Yeah. That's it. Yes, we need a kind a resolving of resolving yes, resolution uh, uh, system, uh, yeah, and we mechanism. need some some okay. kind of central one. Mm -hmm. This resolution should be mm -hmm. resolved by one single authority. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I want to draw, I mean, I want to draw a picture how people could imagine or envision the future with all these technologies, with everything that the process that's going on what it's going to be like to live in such a civilization. Just for, for conclusion, how would you imagine uh, that this process is evolving into, like into a, is it more evolutionary the or evolutionary, mm, transitional? The most, the most obvious consequences mm -hmm. of a uh, process expansion of such a system would be uh, the decrease in the role of uh, humans in mm -hmm. the, this routine process. Uh, and increase the role of uh, computers and software mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And the biggest question is what will happen to these people that played this role, that they, their job was to, to facilitate the process. Whether they want to become uh, more, how to say, uh, c convert their the activity to more creative, uh, I mean, sphere, or they maybe don't want or are not capable to do that. Mm -hmm. That's where we come to the point of this guaranteed income. Universal income, you, guaranteed yes, income. Yes, universal guaranteed yeah. income. So you see, you see that coming? So yes, yeah. it, it probably it's coming and it, it's I increasing in size, in mm -hmm. size of population that you'll get. And the, the, the problem is how they will, how they will live and what, what they will do with this income. Exactly. Yeah. Whether they want to travel or whether they want to keep working or whatever, uh, I don't know the answer. But definitely the portion of a population that will live on this guaranteed income will increase. And if we would like to see a kind of resolution of this mm -hmm. inequality problem, uh, it's a rather tricky thing because uh, equality and equality it's uh, something that is very personal. Your understanding, my understanding, not necessarily could be the same. And if I can get whatever I want in general, I feel myself equal, I mean, mm -hmm. satisfied. At least equal access, equal opportunities. Yeah. Uh. And where it goes, yeah. it goes to the virtual reality model mm -hmm. because if I can't get something in my real reality I can try to get this in my virtual reality mm -hmm. because it will produce the same effect to my mind to my body and so I could achieve it yeah. without having this same thing in, in a real so you're already seeing this uh, yes it realistic happens. but futuristic um, you know, technological advancements, whether it be, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, neurobiology in connection with virtual reality and, and, and other technologies? Yes, because uh, technology. ultim ultimately, ultimately we are thinking about uh, the uh, appropriate level of satisfaction to everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, satisfaction of their needs. Mm -hmm. And some needs we can satisfy, I mean, uh, in reality, and some needs we can satisfy Virtually, for example, in 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 uh, one country, there was a mug invented that could produce effect of uh, drinking cola, but w when you put just simple water into this mug, because there there are some sensors 
across the uh, edge of this mug, and when you drink it, you really feel that it's cola, yeah. but it's not yeah. cola, it's water. Mm -hmm. And the question is, whether you're really drinking cola or water? Or maybe drinking water even more useful for you <laughs> than drinking cola mm -hmm. because of several uh, reasons. So that is the question. What is the real, what is art artificial, what okay. is the, uh, not I real? Uh, okay, Mr. Koryshenko, um, one last question. You know, I, I'm a big admirer of the Russian wisdom, philosophies, and technological advancements. And I know there's a lot of technology, not only, of course, in, in Russia, but uh, globally, in some countries specifically, that are being, you know, for good or bad reasons, suppressed. Um, do you see uh, that these suppressed technologies, would it be patents that are you know, confiscated in the, name, in the name of national security, or just you know, underground technologies which you know, are financed through black budgets, could be disclosed in the course of this time, you know, in the course of this process of this, I don't know, let's just call it decentralization, a more you know, logical and healthy economical uh, infrastructure and, and more maturity within humanity. Do you see this coming? Because the technology should be serving humanity. And I think we, we might not need cars, combustion engines, and all this, you know, <laughs> pretty much old uh, technology which has been here for 100 years, well, approximately 100 years. Uh, you know, I'm talking about technologies where we don't pollute, we, we, we have more smooth, uh, frictionless communication, transportation, uh, you know, technology in totality that is serving us, humanity? Mm, it's, 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 it's a very, very, very tough and complex question. Let me, uh, let me try to answer this uh, this way. Um, blockchain itself will not help make people more happy, but it could create this framework for more transparent system mm -hmm. practically in every sphere. More transparency means more, uh, how to say, more, uh, more adequate distribution of, of wealth in general. And uh, where it's a little bit more difficult to steal something, to uh, try to, to fake something and so on and so forth. But again, it's up to the state how to use this tool. And uh, blockchain itself will not resolve the problem. And now we live in the world where market competition between companies, mm -hmm. between people, uh, raised up to the competition between countries. Mm -hmm. But not a form of war or armed, uh, how to say, fighting. It's not practical thing now. In a form of a different, in a different form. So if and when the the, the the country will try to use blockchain in international context just to achieve something mutual via blockchain. Probably it could help resolve many other social issues in a similar way. And, and contribute to a structural change, I mean. Yeah, so but structural it's, transformation. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's again the issue that exists practically in every country. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are two ideas. Whether you can get to the point if you are increasing the market size of your economy, or you can get to the point if you increase the state or public side of mm -hmm. your economy. Public means more taxes, more redistribution, and so forth. Market means more efficient, more productive, and so on and so forth. But Every country trying to find its balance, and, uh, and if it takes the, the whole world, it's practically impossible to understand how it can be, how to say, mixed in the uh, whole world context. Okay, okay, appreciate that. Uh, do you have any concluding remarks? Uh, anything um, you, you want to, you know, deliver? No, I, to, I, I, to I think, I think, uh, if we are talking about blockchain, we shouldn't overestimate its role, mm -hmm. and especially we shouldn't think that if you attach the table of blockchain to something in the world, it will be better, not necessarily, or maybe it definitely will not. The blockchain, it's a mechanism that could improve the facility of the network, and make this network more stable, more uh, solid, more reliant, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But networking, not necessarily uh, how to say, think we are definitely looking for. 
So it's, it's just the tool. And the, the, the goal is still the problem. I see. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank Dr. you. <laughs> I hope to see you again in <laughs> Vienna. And uh, have a good Thank you very much. You, you have my address. Could you send me the, the yes, reference? Yes, of course. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you.